Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. I hope everybody's doing great today. We have so much to cover here. We have a lot to cover. Lots of stuff going on. And so starting out over here, instead of where you might think with talking about the hurricane and other things going on, just because I think this kind of puts things in a nutshell. So there's a study out that says that Earth civilization has a very low probability of surviving the next few decades without facing a catastrophic collapse. The study, which I have over here, and I'll give you the PDF uh, on it, it basically says we have a 10% chance that there's not going to be a societal collapse. I think we could see that society is collapsing right now, and you know, there's many reasons for it. It's economic, it's also earth change related, and it's consciousness related as well. I feel mostly it's consciousness related, but people might not know that yet. They might not recognize it. Well, the study gets into things like deforestation, uh, runaway climate change. And, you know, we've talked about this before because, you know, there's different lines of thought. So obviously they've tried to sell us that everything is due to carbon emissions when the sun is so much more powerful. And there's other drivers as well. We are in very interesting times to say the least. And we do have wildfires going on. First major wildfire of the season scorches over 26,000 acres, less than 5% contained at the moment. And, you know, California has gone through just brutal wildfire season after an, one after another the last three years. And uh, here we've been talking about the Apple Fire. Um, it's interesting, too, to look at it because they're wondering if it was arson and set on purpose. Um, yet, if you guys follow Dutch, he did a really interesting uh, video showing that it's kind of right on the fault lines and you got to wonder if it's volcanic uh, as well what's really going on here right if there's something coming to the surface to ignite fires that's curious Twenty six thousand four hundred fifty acres five percent contained so uh again our best wishes are for everybody in the area they've been, it's it's just been brutal every area has its own things to contend with and this article from Strange Sounds is talking just about that. The Apple Fire explodes out of control overnight. And, you know, th at this time that this was published, 8,000 evacuations. And I think there is a leak, a link, I should say. Uh, and it was interesting, too, because it did look like there was a leak of something, some sort of gases down there in Baja, California, uh, that Dutch was talking about and showing Gotta wonder. I, I really do feel we're very, very close to some major shaking and and or major volcanic events on the West Coast. I, I feel it too, and I think a lot of other people maybe unknowingly feel that exact thing. The other thing we have is the drought situation, which is getting worse and worse. And talking to uh, one of our really good family members over in West Virginia, she was talking about how the drought's affecting her over there. You know, water, water everywhere, but then in some places, not the case. And we've had insane heat waves in the West, as you see. Uh, apocalyptic heat waves, Death Valley, Iraq, and Kuwait. Extreme temperatures close to 130 degrees. Can you imagine if the grid goes down? It's not going to be... It's not going to be pleasant. It might not even be survivable for, for many, many people. Right. I, I feel the exact same thing. And so, yeah, you got records falling left and right. California, Arizona, uh, getting 115 to 120 degrees. Death Valley's temperature reaches 127. Meanwhile, parts of Iraq, Iran, and Kuwait came close to all-time records of 127. And we could verify those temps because, you know, we were kind of going full bore ahead with what we were doing. And, uh, you know, it, it's just impossible to do anything when the temps are that high. And then talking about tropical storm, Isis, uh this one is going to end up hitting the Carolina coast. It, it looks pretty much like it's going to be coming on in the early morning hours. You know, right at the border, South Carolina, North Carolina. It's going to impact uh, everywhere from Columbia, South Carolina, all the way up 
through the D.C. metro area, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, of course, and up through Jersey and go up into New York and impact parts of Connecticut more, more than likely as well. It may end up being a hurricane or it may stay at tropical storm level. But either way, it's it's going to be a rain event with winds roughly between 65 and 70 miles an hour. The good thing is it's a fast mover. So <laughs> let's hope there's no weather wars going on and they put the brakes on this one uh, like we saw with Florence. You know, because Florence, that was insane to see a hurricane move at one mile an hour. Mm, yeah, that doesn't seem natural. But this one, it should not be as we look at the spaghetti models. And let's see if we get this to load. There we go. Carolina's bracing for storm surge. So we could have up to a five foot storm surge. And then again, any area that has already been getting hit with flooding and uh, has a saturated ground, you're going to get more flooding. So you're going to have winds typically 40 to 60 miles an hour tonight into Tuesday a.m. Uh, be aware of the possibility for tornadoes to the north and the east as this, that's the area of the strongest uh, winds. And here we see it did wreak havoc in the Caribbean. And actually in Puerto Rico uh, on July 30th, you had almost 500,000 people without power and 150,000 people losing their water supply. That's dangerous again. It really is. And right when you really think things can't get any worse, here we have something. And and you just got to watch this. This is in China. And we've, we've been talking about everything going on in China. And I, I'm actually convinced that there's weather warfare going on on a grand scale. So we have heavy rainstorms coming in. And just, you know, watch. Look at that. Look at that. That is insane. And we did get from the guides that that's exactly what's going on. There's natural changes going on. And, you know, if we look over here. That's China again. You know, tell me there's not weather warfare going on there. Just the road just gave way because of all the flooding that's going on. And by the way, Typhoon Hagaput slammed into China. And just to add insult, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. there you have the, uh, I think this is the fourth, yeah, fourth name storm of the 2020 Pacific typhoon season. So this one hit with 80 mile an hour winds, gusts up to 115 miles an hour, and obviously torrential rain. You know, it's just, is it, yeah, it's just part of these times. As as David Devine over at DAP 2030 has talked about, China knows these times. They've got the best documentation of the different weather cycles going back way farther than we do in the Western world. And uh, at the same time, you know, we have China apparently getting ready to move in order to secure resources. We've talked about everything that's gone on uh, from Project for a New American Century back in 90, 1997, saying if the United States wants to be the dominant country on the planet in this century, like it was in the 20th century, especially post-World War II, it's going to have to secure resources. And this is what China's doing when they lost 85% of their crop. And if we get a chance to, we'll, we will talk about that on the first channel later today. Flash floods damage or destroy dozens of homes, claims lives of at least 16 people in eastern Afghanistan. As we've talked about, it's either there's no rain or there's way too much everywhere you look. Floods in Seoul, South Korea from the heavy rains, praying for everybody's safety who lives near the Han River. As you see, it's rising. And when... When you see street signs starting to disappear, you know that it's trouble. And when you see rotation starting with clouds that look like this, you know that's potential trouble too. And this is the Detroit River into LaSalle. So when you see that rotation, that's uh, heads up. Be aware of the possibility of a tornado building. 
And we had another asteroid, asteroid 2020 PA, flew by Earth at only 0.15 a lunar distance. And this one was um, between 15 and 33 feet, so it wouldn't take out a city, but if it did come down, it could do damage. There's been a lot of those guys. Um, let's see if they tell us the total number. Well, you can see all these. I think we were in the high 40s right now within the uh, lunar distance so far this year. So this is a good chart because it'll give you a, a reference point compared to years past. So actually last year in August we had more than we did so far this year at this point. That's interesting as well. Uh, we see we have another eruption, Langila spews ash to 8,000 feet, first time since 2018. And then this article out of Live Science, two Canadian ice caps have completely vanished now from the Arctic. And uh, the, the NASA, um, the scientists say they had given the ice caps five years to live back in 2017, so they went away quicker than they expected. And there's massive changes going on. And you see a lot of conflictory data at times, too. So we have those two caps disappearing. If we look at total Arctic sea ice volume, 2020 is the black line. It's at the lowest point going back to 2004. It's been running pretty much at the lowest point all year long. And this is interesting, too, because if we look back to 2019, it was appreciably higher and, and running higher most of the time. And then it started to bottom out right here going into October last year. And it really hasn't changed since. And meanwhile, it might be August, but Lake Michigan is dangerously cold with temps below 50. So they're warning people if you're going to go swimming and braving the temps, uh, it's unusually cold over in Lake Michigan. And we do have a vicious cold snap also set to engulf Australia. So you're going to be setting some records down there for record cold. So, you know, we're just seeing extremes is what we're seeing at every end. It almost feels in some ways like, you know, the planet's kind of going upside down and topsy-turvy and everything is just uh, kind of insane in some ways. But it's all part of the big changes that are happening. And researchers are offering new clues about where and how subduction starts on Earth. And the subduction zones are where you're going to get the greatest uh, damage from earthquakes. And there's a map in here that talks about that as well as you can see some of the points right here to keep an eye on. And that's this map. So these are the areas to watch for the biggest quake potentials and also often uh, tsunami if it's right along the coast. And if we've had our eyes on Cascadia. We'll continue to do so. As you know, you had seen what they think was a 9.0 there in 1700. Now, phytoplankton is blooming uh, in the Arctic Ocean, and it's on the rise. So I would take that as a sign again that the ocean temperatures are warming up there. And of course, we 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 are told that there's a magnetic pole reversal uh, going on underway, and the magnetosphere has declined and then there's a line of thought like Hapgood and Velikovsky that at some point the entire crust shifts and that would cause immense havoc. And we'd end up with, as Edgar Casey said, some places that were uh, very tropical will be more temperate and perhaps even frigid and vice versa. Some places that were frozen with ice will, will soon melt, you know, because they're going to be in totally different zones. And Casey saw that as well as others. Yeah, and I can feel that when I reach out into the ether with my energy, I feel that we're at least going to feel the beginnings of that in our lifetime. Yeah, and, and what what Cindy has gotten from the guides is that really for us right now, it's more the geopolitical thing going on. Uh, it's more people waking up and rising up against uh, what has been a very, very unfair, unjust system that's been all about suppressing us in so many ways. But yet the earth changes will still be coming even when that is over. So even when humanity has shed the yoke of the oppressors, 
which will come before the earth changes are totally done. Uh, so the earth changes are going to continue after that. Yeah, and you know, the turbulence comes from within us too, not just the planet. Oh, most definitely. So as we see here out of strange sounds, don't let the solar minimum fool you. Solar superstorms can also explode during the quiet phase of an 11-year solar cycle as shown by the solar minimum superstorm of 1903. So even though you know we're at really a very, very low point in solar activity, you still can have big enough flares to cause major disruptions. And this talks about in late October 1903, one of the strongest solar storms in modern history hit Earth. And the timing of the storm, interestingly, parallels where we are right now, near the solar minimum just after a week solar cycle. And we've seen some waking up. And those of you guys that follow our brother, Mark, over at Wages World, he keeps an eye on this on a regular basis as well. So, you know, we, we shouldn't get lulled into a, for, a false sense of security, whether it's a EMP because of the conflict that develops and is developing around the world. It may not be an EMP. It may be a CME, a coronal mass ejection that takes out the grid. So the 1903 event wasn't always recognized as a great storm. But now uh, with what we have been able to garner from this, it actually was pretty big. Ranked six on the list of known geomagnetic storms since 1850, just below the extreme storm of 1989, which blanked out, blacked out Quebec. So be aware of that. And they also have a new method to help predict these solar flares. And it's interesting because what they talk about is polarity, polarity. And we were talking about that yesterday in the live. Um, that's part of the mysteries of how this universe works. It's all about polarity and, and electromagnetism. Mm -hmm. It definitely is on so many different levels in the ether and in the 3D. Yeah, so it gets, it gets into within the active region, there are boundaries where the magnetic field is positive on one side, negative on the other, like a refrigerator magnet. And it creates an event that's similar to an avalanche. And avalanches start with a small crack. If the crack is up high on a steep slope, a bigger crash is possible. So we're going to really keep an eye on the sun because the other thing is with the ma magnetosphere uh, weakening as it is, without that solar wind to protect us as well, we're, we're much more susceptible to incoming energies and they could do a lot more damage uh, than typical when we are in a typical cycle. And so what really is going on in Mars? There's a strange elongated cloud reappearing over a volcano. Scientists say the curious plume is not linked to volcanic activity. No, that we can't have that. But forms as airflow is influenced by the side of the volcano that does not face the wind. They're always going to come up with, uh, you know, oh, you're, you're not really seeing that happen. You know, that's not really uh, indicating anything. There's, there's no volcanic activity. It's, it's, it's just a weather balloon. Well, no, no, it can't be a weather balloon on Mars. Uh, and we can't admit aliens totally yet, but we kind of did already. Yeah, don't believe your lion eyes. <laughs> exactly. So interesting, interesting to see this. It, it, would, it is very reminiscent of watching satellite images of volcanoes going off or a big fire. Uh, which there's, I don't think there's anything to burn on the surface there. Hmm, or is there? Well, interesting. And just to give you guys uh, some ideas for those of you that are buying bug out places and just heading to the hills because it's high time to head to the hills, um, shipping containers can make amazing houses. And I think I've seen, this is in Logan, Ohio. Yeah, I did see, I, I saw a video um, this guy, I forget what his name is, that just goes around uh, to all the Airbnbs, at unusual Airbnbs, and stays in them, and then he does videos on them, uh, rating them and telling, them, telling his viewers if they should go check it out. And this one is adorable. And, you know, it's amazing that you can make such a cute, um, strong, sturdy home out of a shipping container. Of course, you know, it's it's a tiny home, and tiny homes are getting to be bigger and bigger uh, as far as popularity goes. Um, 
Not that they're getting bigger and bigger on the inside, but look at how gorgeous that is. I mean, I think it's beautiful. What, what do you think? Oh, it's absolutely stunning. I love it. Very clean. And this is like a garage door that you would go to your auto mechanic, and it rolls up just like that. So it turns the living space into something that feels much larger because you have as much space on the outside as you do on the inside, which is a really cool feature. So I wanted to just share something a little different, maybe inspire somebody. And there we have how to build a urban everyday carry pack. You could think of it as a bug out bag that you keep with you at all times. Because, you know, who knows when something big is going to happen in this world. And, you know, we're, like we were talking about, just we, we've wanted to just get somewhere cooler for a little while. Anywhere cooler for a little while. But, you know, you don't know. You're going to have to do research, for one, if you're going into different states. And uh, there's so many rules, laws, and regulations. Like we were talking about Aaron Doherty did a video that we mentioned yesterday. And he was in Sedona, and he said he gets to Sedona, and I think he's from Vegas. Um, and he said, you know what? There's a curfew at 9, 9 p.m., curfew. So, you know, things like that in these times, you've got to be aware of. And then we've seen so many people go crazy on people yeah. when they're not wearing masks and somebody else is. And uh, it's just a wild world right now. So being prepared is a great thing. And th these are some ideas to keep in that you know, you, whether you want to call it a bug out bag or how they are wording it here, just some things to have on hand, like a bandana, hand sanitizer, uh, Sharpie metal pen, coin purse, notebook pad, paracord, painkillers, toilet paper, TP, you never know, uh, off towelettes, band-aids, decongestant, phone charger, obviously, and these days, you know, when do you ever leave the house without a phone charger. I hardly ever do if, we, if we're driving anywhere. Uh, tool bits, lighter, mini screwdriver, batteries, eating tool, tuck, uh, duct tape, uh, gloves, mini light, zip ties, multi-tool, headlamp, flashlight, handgun, and water bottle. So yeah, it is crazy times. So there's a little video here for you guys to check out too. If you haven't checked it out yet, please do check out our website, which I just made a little bit cleaner. Uh, thank you, Bill, for your inspiration to clean it up. He, he had the, the guts to just say, you know, it looks kind of shabby. So I appreciate it, brother. Uh, so we've done a little bit to clean it up, and we have testimonials to our energy work and everything there as well. Thank you for your support on Ko-Fi, as the computer's taking so long to load, and also on Patreon. As always, guys, be prepared. God bless and namaste. Namaste.